Good morning, YouTube. Robert J. Morris in the house here. Uh, listen, this is going to be an update, plus I have one uh, story for you that I just came across this morning as I rolled out of bed. First off, I want to do a recap on two other stories. Uh, first one was the problem with the tactical shield in Battleclan Raid, and the second one will be regarding the imagery of Bastet in the uh, BRI logo on their badges. First off, I want to thank all the listeners and viewers out there for your feedback. I asked you for it, and you came, uh, and you gave what you could uh, as far as input goes. And we have finally located the model of the Tactical Shield in the Battle Clan raid. Uh, thank you to uh, uh, Juge Fayard. Uh, thank you for your... Uh, for your research there this is what we do guys i mean some of us will report this we can only do so much research there's only so many hours in the day i'm currently not working so i get to spend a little more time doing this and other things however this kind of reporting is all of our responsibility we need to vet each other's research we need to ask for help where help is needed in the case where we don't have certain leads we may ask for it and you guys are awesome thank you so much for uh for your feedback in, in all cases um this uh what i'll continue to do is update old stories if i'm flat out wrong on an opinion or 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 something stupid gets out i'll pull the video but if i'm asking you guys for for any assistance in the research i'm going to leave the previous videos up and then amend those videos with updates such as this. Okay, guys, first off, uh, problem with the tactical shield in the Bataclan raid. I uh, went on to say that uh, it was questionable how they would use uh, such a poor shield for, for a raid or an assault. Now, there's a lot of comments in there. You can go ahead and check it out. There's several comments uh, about this. But uh, the one, here, here's, the, here's, the, here's the one right here. Okay, so the model is a Ramsey's model shield. And here we have the same shield. And this is the shield itself. Now, it is definitely on wheels. If you see over here in this corner, this is basically what we're kind of looking at. Um, I still find it peculiar how they would use a shield that wouldn't stop those bullets. Thanks to uh, GTO PMD, he sent me several videos. Um, there are some really good ones there uh, regarding different types of ammo, different types of plate, different types of armor, Kevlar, uh, ceramics. Um, there is a huge selection of bullet stoppers out there, guys. And another user uh, mentioned that uh, he had worked for police uh, in the past and it was very possible that on a quick call to arms, they weren't able to get the uh appropriate shield that they would need because the one that they were using was most likely a blast shield well regardless irregardless um i do agree with the person however the only issue i have with that logic is the fact that charlie hebdo had already happened and this team that raided the Bataclan is the same team that was involved in charlie hebdo so you'd think that they'd be on overwatch they'd be they'd be they'd be they'd be there with the, each kind of shield that they need in in their trucks they they would be totally um uh you know what's the word i'm looking for they'd be completely and totally stocked so anyway that aside um i'm just glad we were able to find the actual model thank you again to the users i'm going to move on over to oh where are you Oh, yeah, okay, here, Bastet, God of Fire. Um, in this video, 
we looked at the uh, we looked at the logo, and I I mistakenly called it a cat, or it looked like a, a cat mask or something along those lines. And in one of the other police logos, they also used the panther. So I brought in a reference to Bastet, God of Warfare, and. Well, it's it's odd because the Egyptian symbology doesn't stop here because I was wrong, I was corrected. This is actually a gargoyle and is symbolic of the gargoyles of Notre Dame. Now, how is that relevant? It's interesting because it's just adding to the rabbit hole. But anyway, um, the, the gargoyle goes back in etymology back to dragon references believe it or not. Um, French legend that sprang up around the name of St. Romanus, the former chancellor of the Merovingian King Clotaire II, who was made Bishop of Rouen, relates how he delivered the country around Rouen from a monster called Garjoui, or Le Garjoui is said to have been the typical dragon with bat-like wings, a long neck, and the ability to breathe fire from its mouth. There are multiple versions of the story, either that St. Romanus subdued the creature with the crucifix, or he captured the creature with the help of the only volunteer, a condemned man. It each, the monsters led back to ruin and burned, but its head and neck would not burn due to being tempered by its own fire breath. The head was then mounted on the walls of the newly built church to scare off evil spirits and used for protection. In commemoration of St. Romain, the archbishops of Rouen were granted the, the right to set a prisoner free on the day that the reliquary of the saint was carried in procession. And see details at Rouen. Now, like I said, the rabbit hole does go deeper, um, believe it or not. Uh, there was uh, Egyptian references. Uh, they also uh, they also used gargoyle type uh, architecture, basically to the, their purpose. Architecturally speaking, is to allow rainwater to run off of a building without going down the masonry and out down the walls. So they would lead the water off and they would drip. So that was their functional purpose in terms of architecture. And the Egyptians did the same thing, also using animals. Now, funny is that we go back to a feline reference because the primary animal used by the Egyptians was the lion. So um, anyway, and then here's just an interesting excerpt uh, for those who like to jump down this rabbit hole. Um the uh, 12th century St. Bernard of Clairvaux was famous for speaking out against gargoyles, and this passage is actually quite intriguing. What are these fantastic monsters doing in the cloisters before the eyes of the brothers as they read? What is the meaning of these unclean monkeys, these strange, savage lions and monsters? To what purpose are here placed these creatures, half beast, half man, or these spotted tigers? I see several bodies with one head and several heads with one body. Here is a quadruped with a serpent's head. There a fish with a quadruped's head. There, then again, an animal, half horse, half goat. Surely, if we do not blush for such absurdities, we should at least regret what we have spent on them. Anyway, um, it's funny how it says, here is a quadruped with a serpent's head. Here is a fish with a quadruped's head. Then again, an animal that's half horse, half goat. Surely, if we do not blush for such absurdities, we should at least regret what we have spent on them. This is the 12th century, guys. This is long before Friday Night TV. Either this guy did a lot of acid, or he witnessed these things. You don't just make this shit up for it to be read later. Not like this. You understand? Anyway, that's an interesting rabbit hole in itself. And then there's all kinds of animal gargoyles. Uh, yeah, see here, ancient Egyptians, Greeks, Romans, they all used animal-shaped water spouts. Uh, during the 12th centuries, when gargoyles appeared in Europe, 
The Roman Catholic Church was growing stronger and converting many new people. Most of the population at this time were illiterate, and therefore images were very important to convey ideas. Many early gargoyles decided some version of a dragon, especially in France. In addition to serving as spouts for water, the gaping mouths of these gargoyles evoked the fearsome destructiveness of these legendary beasts, reminding the lady of the need for the church's protection. So, again, we got our dragon references. Our dragon references are very, very huge, uh, going back to to the uh, Middle Ages, the 12th century. Um, there's way far too many dragon references uh, to count. And, you know, there's the terms like draconians, uh, Draco. I mean, like I said, this rabbit hole goes deeper and deeper. But moving on, we are going to go to the feature story of the morning. And France has begun shutting down alternative news, alternative news websites. The French version of We Are Change has been blocked already amid an unprecedented crackdown on alternative media in Europe. TrueActivist.com reports, Le blog, Le blog de Résistance is a popular French-language alternative news source with over 10 million hits and thousands of regular subscribers. The author, who calls himself Z, has been in panic mode since a state of emergency was called after the Paris attacks. This high-level alert was extended for three months, along with a pro-war propaganda campaign in the media under strict orders to, uh, to terrify the population like never before. While chaos continued outside, the French government locked themselves away to discuss new legislation which would affect the alternative media in a very negative way. Today, Z's greatest fear was realized, and he writes, And so it begins. How long will this blog remain open? The worst is that the French do not care. They are totally obsessed with more security at the expense of their freedoms. The world mocks the terrible secrets revealed by Snowden. Amazing. In France, the land of liberty, today once again I repeat, I am very afraid for freedom of expression and the alternative media. I don't know how much longer I can write and report freely. I fear for myself. Risk-taking was already intense and made worse with the slew of laws passed since the beginning of the year, anti-terrorism law, intelligence. Now it's huge. It's very hard for us to write under the state of emergency. Stress and tension are everywhere. I have a big black blob there. There we go. The tone is clear. It's fearful and worried. It's eerie. It sounds like it was written in Nazi Germany in 1939, not France in 2015. And yes, it goes on to say, Z points out that Francois Hollande has been promising to silence conspiracy theorists since January this year. We Are Change's crime was to post a video with a few questions about the Paris attacks. They seriously pissed off the authorities, and it was enough to get the French version banned for reasons of national security. Z then quotes George Orwell and laments the fact that telling the truth is now an act of suicide. Here's a question. When leaders keep telling us not to allow terrorists to change our way of life, why is crushing dissent the first thing they do when something horrific happens? Isn't dissent part of living in a free world? Aren't protests and asking tough questions of those in power just a couple of the liberties we are supposedly trying to spread around the world? Isn't that part of what makes democracy so great? Well, apparently not. Well, anyway... I'm going to leave the links here uh, for all three of these uh, pages. And you guys... Um, again, you guys are the reason that we're doing this because you're helping us help everyone else wake up. So, I mean, at the end of the day, um, we can't do it all. We got lives to live, you know, not in my case, but most of us have, you know, wives, children, jobs, things we have to do out there. And it's, uh, very, very difficult to, to do everything all the time. So as far as data collection, and analysis goes, we're all in this together. I thank all of you for, for, for taking part, and uh, we will continue to do so. This is, uh, this is a group effort at the end of the day, because we are all in this together, man. And on that note, I'm going to go back to do some research. Anyway, guys, peace out. Stay safe, and uh, yeah. Careful out there. Peace. As that sounds, yeah, yeah. Take these walls and rip them, rip them down.